Hello, my name is Jonathan Joseph Sundstrom, or JJ if you prefer. Uh, the reason I'm running for mayor of the city is a lot of different reasons. Uh, first and foremost, I think, I believe that I've seen a, a, a real deterioration in the quality of life for the city in the last 10 years. I think the priorities of the current administration, especially from the mayor's standpoint, quite honestly, doesn't resonate with average uh, Calgarians. Uh, I believe that I have a lot of creative components that can actually make the quality of life better in this city. Uh, and yet also saving you money. Uh, I've got a lot of different examples that I can allude to there. Top issue as far as I'm concerned is accountability. Now that sounds like, oh well, accountability is very vague. You know, could you be more vague? One of my favorite sayings. Accountability goes from if there's transactions done in the city, i.e., uh, let's say the York Hotel was sold uh, to Encana with uh, some backroom dealing, and then we moved 200 people out during the worst homeless crisis that this city has ever encountered, and leave the building completely empty. Quite honestly, I don't find that too palatable. It sticks in my craw. Accountability is, uh, uh, if we look at resources that are being squandered, i.e., let's say that uh, Dale Stanaway is his uh, employment is terminated, uh, not only the $400,000 payout, but then the other payout, which is sealed by court documents. Now, now you know and I know that those documents are not sealed on his behalf, they are sealed on someone else's behalf of the administration. I'd like to know who these people are that provide the advice, legal people, and the people that said it's okay to terminate his employment because then shouldn't they be paying all of the wrongful dismissal charges? That's one case in point. Other challenges face the city, there's no question that what we're seeing is in essence a representative of 20 to 25 years of uh, short-term planning now with long-term implications. And that would start with uh, uh, the right honorable Ralph Klein, who was the mayor of the city, and then moved on to provincial politics. Um, I wouldn't say so much Al Dewar. If anything, he probably gets a little bit of a lighter ride from me because uh, there's a lot of changes in the political landscape and the financial landscape at that time. However, now what we see from Edmonton all the way down to Calgary is a mess on a myriad of issues. Uh, this city challenges notwithstanding the homeless situation, which quite honestly, I believe that we should actually, instead of seeing a 10-year program like the states, since we only have one-tenth of the population, how about a one-year program? And I'd like to challenge any of those so-called corporations, which of course NCAN is at the top of my list of uh, lovable corporations. Uh, it's a real tragedy that at this point in time the economy may grind to a halt because, well, they might withdraw a billion dollars worth of work in this province, which would actually reduce the pressures on the construction industry and on the costs. And I like the little uh, threats to the rural communities. However, I do know that uh, Ecuador, a lot of people from Ecuador have been saying, please, don't, don't come here. So, uh, I mean, they just can't say enough about a company like Encana, which promotes uh, great values and the pride in our community, and who just happen to be buddy-buddy with uh, the Calgary Herald and with uh, David Braun Kanye, just conjures up a whole bunch of issues that you think that maybe not the real story is getting out. When you talk about traffic, one of my solutions is real straight ahead, drive less. Do you know that actually the way that I see it, if you take a pyramid, you got the seals at the top, guys at the bottom. The people at the bottom, if they actually constructed four 10-hour workday schedules and worked around that, you would actually drive 20% less. You would reduce your fuel consumption by 20%. You'd reduce your carbon input by 20%. And you'd also actually get an extra seven and a half weeks of holidays a year. So who wants to work for a company that offers you 10 and a half weeks holiday a year or three weeks of holiday a year? Your choice. Those decisions aren't going to come from the top. They're going to come from the bottom. I think really, notwithstanding uh, the urban sprawl, which actually ties in with the environmental impact, it's time for this city to stop thinking globally and ignoring locally. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Thinking globally and ignoring locally. Like, are we striving to be a world-class or world-crass city? And that's the direction I see it going in, and it terrifies me, and I have grave concerns with what the administration is heading towards at this point in time. Transportation, and let's say specifically uh, not just the, the direction of the, the whatever it is, the 60-40 split of, of roads versus uh, public transportation. The public transportation system in this city is a joke. Unfortunately, the joke's not funny anymore. You tell me a world-class city can't have 24-hour uh, LRT service? You tell me a world-class city can't provide 24-hour shuttle bus service to all different quadrants of the city? Um, Calgary Transit in itself is a very quasi-public uh, 
quasi-vague body of individuals that have a great deal of impact on the people in the city of this life. I actually had a meeting with Neil McKendrick, one of the senior uh, Calgary Transit Planning officials yesterday. Uh, he was very friendly, he was very helpful, time was tight. Uh, I still walked away with that uh, shaking in my head, kind of going, I don't quite get it, uh, in so much as who exactly is in charge of this place and space, uh, where is the flow charts of the organization of who actually does what? Why is it that Edmonton got 26 trains identical to Calgary Transit at the same time as we got our 39? 39 trains at $156 million, $3.9 million per train. And yet, Edmonton, which runs, runs one-sixth of the traffic that we do, why is it that their trains have air conditioning and Calgary Transit pays Siemens extra money to remove air conditioning. Is our purpose here to actually get people to ride public transit or is it actually just to make it more uncomfortable than possible? Uh, why is it that those seats on the U2, the original trains, you sit and you face each other? If I want to exit, I can do it. Now they, on the SD-160s, you've got seats that actually you have backs. Everyone's facing each other's backs. People on one end of the car get uh, car sick. They're less sociable. If I have to get up and out, you have to get up and out, which means that that crowds uh, the already crowded uh, corridor. And the reason that they did not go to the uh, back to the other configuration, which I think is a little bit more sociable, where you can sit, you can have conversations with someone on the platform, and lo and behold, you could actually carry it on on the train. But now you look at the back of someone's head. I can't sit there and say, "Geez, that's a." That's an interesting uh, brooch there, where did you get that? And actually have some uh, social aspect to it. The reason that they did not go to the uh, original seating facing each other is, well, there was something about feet on the seats, but I really don't think that's a big issue because as we know, the Calgary Transit cleaning schedule is, is um, sub-par to none. Um, the reason they did not go with that configuration was because, quote unquote, we did not have enough complaints. I didn't realize we had a complaint-driven LRT system. The one big point that I'm trying to stress in my campaign, I think they're all interwoven with one another, is, is art is not something, art is not something that you should have to go pay a cover charge at a gallery for, for to go see. Those are all fine and dandy. I appreciate and respect that. However, art is actually part of the social fabric of our city, and art is utilizing uh, blank gray spaces to put actual art, not graffiti, but actual art on walls and harness people's creative energies. Uh, art to me is people not feeling so stifled that they can't uh, break out of the mold a little bit. You know, you might have noticed that actually uh, I have a clothespin on my lapel, and no, you cannot have this one. This one is from Ikea, and it's part of the CCC, that's Calgary Clothespin Conspiracy. And the basic just there is a little bit of mischief, first and foremost. I cannot tell you how many people have struck up conversations pertaining to that. But the other thing is, you actually look at that, geez, that, that V could actually stand for voting. Huh. V, voting. I think it's time that people in this city actually get off their butts and do something about it instead of saying this could be a great city but or it should be this but. And I'm not talking about the size of your so I'm talking about yeah but, B-U-T-S. You have to understand that unless you have a say in what goes on in this city, they don't moan and groan. I did get on the LRT a while back and uh, converse with a gentleman and he says I have no use for politicians, you're all liars and scumbags or else. I said well actually no it's politicians, pedophiles, then, uh, or sorry, lawyers, pedophiles, politicians, right? And he says, yeah, basically that's it. He says, I, I don't give a crap about politics. I said, well, you should. And he says, why should I? And I said, kind of hot here in this train today, isn't it? This is during the heat wave in the summertime. He says, yeah, so? So I just conveyed to him that in a faraway galaxy called Edmonton, identical train said this. Well, let me tell you, suddenly he became a lot more animated and wanted to know why not, what was that, what the reason for that, et cetera, et cetera. So, I don't know, why don't you uh, email Calgary Transit like I did? Don't worry, I haven't got a response yet either. And he was actually quite livid. And I said, now you understand where I'm coming from. These kind of decisions impact all of our life. Why people should vote for me? Um, because I work harder than the current uh, incumbent and quite honestly, I've always had a very peculiar uh, discomfort with monetary aspects. I've never been impressed with anyone who's got a fancy dancy car. I really predicate my judgment upon a person is not how he talks but how he acts. And uh, quite honestly, I'm not swayed by that whatsoever. And I can tell you countless examples of people saying things to me like, don't you know who I am? Yes, I do. Don't you know how much money I make? Well, when you say something like that, I, like a bull, just want to start to pull my feet and get ready to charge because I don't give an S-H-I-T how much money you make. That's really about it.